Welcome back, fellow folklorists, to Grim Digital Folklore, where we take a look at the inspiration and tales behind some of your favorite games. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the culinary side of the Shinobi with another look at Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. Unlike in Dark Souls or Bloodborne, food plays a surprisingly large role in the land of Ashina. It makes sense after all, but it begs the question as to why food is featured so prominently in Sekiro as opposed to other From Software games. Perhaps it's simply to replicate the importance of food in an era of Japanese history that saw war and famine abound. Though as we are about to see, almost all of the food included in the game would have been of special significance to a ninja such as Sekiro. This video is actually the second part of a look at the items in Sekiro, so if you'd like, you can check that one out first, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Now, let's start by taking a look at the most commonly used food item that many wouldn't consider food, the pellet. As the second standard healing item behind the healing gourd, it would seem safe to assume that the pellet was actually medicine, even being referred to as ganyaku in Japanese. However, while it's not entirely wrong to think of it as medicine, feudal Japan and ninja in particular were large on practicing herbal medicine, which made use of cooking. One of the uses of this medicinal cooking was in the ninja's production of a series of small, edible dumplings and military rations, also sometimes referred to as ganyaku, that were believed to be capable of a number of different effects. Before I start describing these effects, though, I should clarify that what I'm mentioning next should be treated like essentially any facts about ninja. That is, that there is a mixture of fact and fiction, and the truth is probably somewhere in between. After all, the ninja were more than happy to let their enemies believe they could perform supernatural acts, and this has led to a lot of hearsay as to what ninja were actually capable of. That said, there are at least three different versions of ninja dumplings that were said to have different effects. The first was the Hyorogan, which was a dumpling that was made of a mixture of rice and a variety of herbs or spices such as cinnamon and ginseng. While these were supposed to be invigorating, they were also fairly standard and were most likely intended to serve as a form of portable ration for traveling ninja. In support of this, there are reports that armies, particularly those near ninja villages such as Iga, would sometimes eat Hyorogan as well. The other two varieties of ninja dumplings, however, were supposedly capable of much more fantastical feats. The second dumpling, the Kikatsugan, was a smaller dumpling that was said to be capable of suppressing hunger, and was capable of keeping even starving ninja in a state of readiness. While that is probably exaggerated, it was made primarily of flour or yams mixed with medicinal herbs and spices that would be effective as a snack and would allow one to go longer between meals functioning as a kind of ninja energy bar. The third dumpling was capable of even more fantastic feats, since eating it was believed to allow an individual to forego water for an extended period, supposedly days. Once more, while it probably wouldn't let you go that long without water, these pills, called suikatsugan, were composed of ingredients like pickled plum combined with a number of herbs and spices that could stimulate one's saliva production and keep one better hydrated overall. Taken together, these dumplings definitely seem to provide a good basis for the use of the pellet in Sekiro, since they were also small and claimed to help one's vitality in a similar manner. The pellet is far from the only food item in the game, though. However, a lot of these items are pretty fairly straightforward. Rice is fairly basic since it was a staple part of the Japanese diet, though it is worth mentioning that ninja commonly ate a prepared rice called hoshi that was boiled then dried, meaning it could be cooked quickly or eaten as is in tough situations. The sweet rice ball is also just as it sounds, a sweet kind of dessert called ohagi that is made of red beans and rice. Though it's also worth noting the rarity of sweets in Japan at the time, as well as the importance of Kuro making such an item for Sekiro. But really, there are only two other types of food in the game that are worth looking at. The first of these are the persimmons. Both the persimmon and taro persimmon have item descriptions that seem to stress the importance of these fruits. First, as a nutritious food, and second, as the apparent main source of food for the monstrous taro troop. It's certainly confusing, but it's not too surprising that persimmons showed up in a game about feudal Japan, since it's the national fruit. 
But as for the distinction between the two persimmons and their ripeness in game, I'm a little lost. It's true that there are two common varieties, one which can be eaten unripe, known as fuyu persimmons, and one that can only be eaten at the peak of ripeness or dried, called hachia. That said, I can't be sure if the persimmon and taro persimmon in game are supposed to be different varieties or not. I'm also not sure why the Taro troop, who are most likely named after the giant child with superhuman strength Kintaro, are so interested in the Taro persimmons. The divine child is able to eat them without turning into a hulking man-child, so I can only guess they are interested in them because persimmons are full of vitamins and minerals, which make it a very nutritious food overall. Putting that aside though leaves us just one other food, or rather a category of food, the sugars. These sugars, out of all the other edible items in game, are definitely the most unique to me for a few reasons. The first is that this type of candy simply didn't exist in Japan at the time as far as I can find. The process of candy or sweet making didn't involve refining sugars to the point of making hard candy until the arrival of the Portuguese, and even then it was limited to basic sweets such as conpeto. Even these sweets were incredibly rare for the time. For example, the Portuguese missionary Luis Fros famously used a flask of conpeto to convince Oda Nobunaga to permit Christian missionaries in Japan. If even crudely refined sweets were so rare and expensive at the time though, then how is it that a Buddhist temple has access to a seemingly huge supply of even rarer hard candies? This might be meant as a testament to the greed of Simpo Temple and just how much wealth they hoarded. To be able to recreate the costly sugar refining process would certainly require a huge initial investment, but where would they have learned the recipe for these kind of candies in the first place? Well, there was one region of the world capable of producing a crude kind of this hard candy at the time. And just like with the pellets, these candies were believed to grant revitalizing effects that could act as a kind of medicine. Manus Christi was a type of candy made with refined sugar and other usually precious items such as ground gemstones or gold flake, which provided color and was said to give it its special properties. The problem is, Manus Christi were prohibitively expensive even as sweets go. Not a surprise given the ingredients, I suppose, but these kinds of treats were only enjoyed by European royalty at the time. For this kind of sweet to reach Japan during the period the game takes place would require the travel of a noble. A noble who both had the funds and desire to reach Japan, and a reason to want to rely on the medicinal effects of the Manus Christi in the first place. Perhaps a rich noble who was traveling in search of a cure for his sick son, who had been taking them as medicine. It would seem that in his haste to cure his son, the armored warrior may have provided the monks of Simpo with the knowledge to produce the sugars. This would mean that the monks not only took his son for their experiments and forced him to work as a guard, but profited off of his knowledge as well, taking full advantage of the links he would go to in order to save his son. I guess it's no surprise then that beating the armored warrior feels rather bittersweet in the end. Well, I think that about covers the topic of food in Sekiro, or it should have. However, Grimm has something to say about my last video. I hate that alarm. Unfortunately though, Grimm is right. I missed something pretty major in my last video, so now Grimm gets to gloat. In this case, I completely missed the origin for the Divine Grass, and it's fairly important because it can tell us a little bit more about the elusive Dogen, as well as Simpo Temple. You see, Dogen is a name that refers not just to the absent doctor from Sekiro, but also Dogen Zenji, the famed writer and founder of the Soto School of Zen. I had originally considered the two characters unrelated, because Dogen lived during the Kamakura period and was a monk, not a doctor. However, there is one tale involving Dogen the monk that is very relevant, and it goes as such. <clears throat> when traveling through China with his companion Dosho, Dogen became gravely ill, but he did not have any medicine to help him. Suddenly though, a stranger appeared before them and offered Dogen an herbal pill which cured him immediately. Asking the stranger for their name, they revealed themselves as the Kami Inari before vanishing. 
This medicine given to Dogen would become known as Gedokugan and was then distributed to the temples throughout Japan. There are a few variations of this tale, but the key details are all the same. Dogen or his companion is cured by a miraculous medicine that he then shares with the temples in Japan. This medicine, also called Gedokun, was said to be able to cure any ailment. This makes the Gedokugan sound surprisingly similar to the divine grass, an item discovered by another Dogen which could also cure any affliction. But the similarity doesn't end there. This story also relates to Simpo Temple, because the Gedokugan was sold by many Soto temples as a way to raise money, just like how the monks of Simpo sell the sugars. It would also seem that in spite of the legends behind it, the pill wasn't actually developed until sometime around the Edo period, over 300 years after Dogen's death, and could be said to have been little more than a placebo. It would seem that the Sinpo monks weren't the only monks willing to lie to make a little profit. There, are you happy now, Grim? Well, I'll take it. To those of you watching, though, you may notice that there were a few other items that could classify as food that I didn't cover in this episode, and that's because I already covered them in an episode about the rest of the items in Sekudo that you can watch right now. Before you go, though, make sure to give this video a like and hit that subscribe button so that you can be updated when my next video comes out, and we'll see you next time. Until then, fellow folklorists.